Right, welcome back everyone. We're going to do a quick overview of my Shimano 6800 Ultegra Cranks. This is a failure video and how to spot the failure if anyone's needing advice out there still on, on this. Uh, these have just failed. These are actually my longest standing cranks. These came on my 2016 TCR Advanced Pro. They did five and a half years in Hong Kong, so all that humidity. They've had a bit of a battering for six or seven months on my gravel bike now, and I've just noticed a failure. And this one's interesting, and this is why I'm filming this, because had I been riding this two by with the normal chain rings on, I probably still wouldn't have noticed this yet. And then we'll get them to the shop, which will be, I think I'm gonna take them to map deck, and we'll see what happens. Now, if you've got the original chain rings, it's worth refitting those, because if you take them back to the shop and they have to replace the whole lot, you'll probably get new chain rings. So I'm gonna dig out the original 5236 rings for these, even though they're old and worn, I've still got them, put them back on, get them to the shop. And I think originally, they were just shipping out cranks and not chain rings, and you had to use your old chain rings, but I think now they're just giving you new chain rings if you've got your original. So first thing to do is whip these Favero pedals off, obviously, these have uh, been on the bike for, for all the testing on the gravel bike and the mountain bike. So these cranks have taken a bit of a battering, but as you can see, I'm riding kind of DIY crank boots on there, which are 3D printed. So let's get those off. Now on the road bike, obviously I probably wouldn't use crank boots, but on this gravel bike where I end up going down a lot of single track, I made my own crank boots. So let's get those off. And you can see it's harboring quite a lot of crap in there. Now there's a chance that they actually could have had a failure under that crank boot somewhere because of the you know, water ingress and it's staying wet for quite a long time and all the dirt in there. But they rarely disbond around this area underneath the, the pedal. It's normally down the sides on the inside of the bond or somewhere by the spider. So let's have a look at that now. Now the first thing to do obviously make sure you've got the right crank set. So this is 6800 series Altegra. And then there's actually a production code which here is OE and they tell you to look at that and refer to a chart as well. But I believe actually it's all of the codes. It's not just a certain number of codes. Uh, so I don't know why they're telling you that. I think it's just all 6800s. Um, so this OE code is in the chart and you can look that chart up on the Shimano website. Yeah, I believe it's all of them. I might be wrong. I've had two more sets of cranks that have gone before this and they were actually newer. But anyway, I was getting some creaks on the bike, which I don't normally get. Normally my bike runs silent. Check the rear through axle, that was tight. Uh, it was happening in and out of the saddle, so it's nothing to do with the saddle or seat post. Uh, it's quite a new Hambini bottom bracket, and I was about to uh, roast Hambini for having a clicking bottom bracket. So the two halves of the, the clamshell have, have, have split, and they're actually starting to creak when they're under load. Like I said, with, with a two-by, with the original chain rings, I probably wouldn't have seen this failure already. And uh, one of the uh, bonded areas, which is quite easy to see when you're running one by, is this bit here. Now, this is a good bit. This hasn't failed yet. The bond line is here and it's still in good condition. There are no visible gaps. Everything looks hunky-dory. Now, if we roll over to the next one, we can start to see a little bit of an air gap in there where it started to separate. And then moving around, this is, I think, the worst area. This one is completely gone. Now, it doesn't look like much, but there should be no gap here. And if you refer to the kind of Shimano tech doc online for the dealers, and I'll drop in some pictures of that now, uh, this is one of the problem areas and if there's any gap there, it's a fail. I've just got the torch out but you can see there is the crack where it started to despond and all of this should be unified as one piece and it goes, starts to run to the other side and it's completely coming away. And the micro kind of flexing of that is what's giving the, the clicking noises under power, under torque. You can see how it started to separate there. A small failure, I think I've caught it early, but there's no point continuing to riding it because it's gonna get worse with the weather and the corrosion and it's gonna end up failing completely. You might expect a failure, it goes down here where there's a very thin kind of sheer lap joint where the adhesive is, um, but it's also very common for them to go up by the spider, which is a less drastic way of failing because one of the ones I had before failed right down on the crank and it, it, it basically snapped when I was riding, so. Uh, let's get these off, get them to the shop, and see what they say. Now the Hambini bottom bracket, the T47, is a tight bugger. Very tight, snug fitting orifice, so I'm going to need to get a little bit of a nylon hammer on that and bash it out. Right, after a few gentle whacks, 
getting my shaft out of Hambini. Still tight. Very good uh, fitting top caps in the Hambini bottom bracket. If we can get it out. Come on, boy. Oh, she's dirty. This bike's had a hard life. Oh, God. I'm trying to do this without knocking the camera over as well. She's coming. She's coming. Right. That little plastic shim there is a 24 mil spacer that I had to put on this double when I had this as two by. Um, so the chain ring cleared the frame. That's nothing uh, official. Take that off. That used to be white. There we go. Uh, let's have a look at that on the bench then. I've cleaned it up a bit. Let's have a little closer look at the crack. So you can see that where it started to separate here down that bond line. And if we follow it round, you can see a gap there where there shouldn't be. And then the bond is separated there. If you can see that, it's more obvious on that side. Now, like I said, I think I've caught this quite early. It's not going to fail catastrophically just yet but as this detachment creeps along the bond join it'll just go around to the other parts on the spider and it'll just slowly separate more and more but this is quite a bad area this is the other part where it started to separate follow that around to the back the crack running down there where it should be you know bonded and it isn't and it kind of correlates with if you imagine where the torque comes in like your maximum power is probably about four or five o'clock and the chain tensions up here got the chain ten ch tension pulling the spider backwards it correlates to that crack there perfectly and then when you know you're putting a load on at the end of the power stroke this one starts to take a lot of the chain tension and that's cracked there as well the ones that are sort of away from the chain tension this one and this one are actually completely fine so it does kind of correspond to where the torque's coming in which is i wouldn't say good but it kind of makes sense from an engineering point of view but uh, let's get it, get the old chain rings out, get the other crank on, sling it in my backpack and take it down the shop. Right, so that's the cranks dropped off at Matt Deck Cycles and hopefully four to six weeks we should get a new pair. Absolutely minging weather, but uh, yeah, cool place. The guy showed me around, very impressive. Uh, they're expanding, uh, nearly got the whole building and I think they're moving into another building as well, but I had a look at some time bikes, some look bikes, some very bling stuff. Right then, skip forward about four weeks. Just had the call, the cranks are ready to be picked up. Here is my new Altega crank set. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the main kind of design and build differences between this one and all the old generation ones that used to fail. There's no real difference in the construction of the non-drive side crank arm, as far as I can see. So we're not really gonna look at that. The chain rings as well, similar construction. Although first thing to note is the fit and finish of the uh, sort of composite cap on the chain rings is pretty poor the adhesive is kind of gunked on all over the shop it's kind of splurging out here and then there's dry areas over there it's kind of messy where the adhesive is you can probably just about see that panel gaps like an old british sports car uh, british leyland quality uh, fit and finish there i'm not sure if they've done that on purpose actually maybe they've opened up those gaps to reduce that kind of meniscus water attracting feature that you used to get in the old ones now the old ones had such a tight gap between the spider and the chain rings i had a theory in the old video that the water was actually getting stuck there um, by kind of surface tension and just sitting there for ages even after you've washed the bike uh, maybe they've opened up those gaps i don't know give them the benefit of the doubt on that not too sure but the main thing to note on this is they've gone to town kind of waterproofing the whole inside hollow structure of this drive side crank arm first of all i've not seen this before on the old generations there's a plug a threaded in plug inside the steel axle and I think that's there for waterproofing so there used to be an old ingress path down the axle uh, into this hollow chamber of the drive side crank arm so they've put like this bonded plastic plug in there which looks like it's threaded in with a kind of four lobed uh, tool and then the other thing to know is the the hole in the end of the spindle which is there to receive the plastic safety clip on the non dry side crank arm is well has always been a through hole and now it's a blind hole you can see the drill hasn't actually gone all the way through or the milling tool hasn't gone all the way through there and again i think that's for preventing any water ingress down this axle and into the cavity to cause the you know hidden corrosion from the inside now if you're a mountain biker or e-biker you'll know that this through hole or what used to be a through hole was quite problematic it was a massive stress raiser and under torque and the clamping of the non-drive side crank arm, 
these could often crack between the hole and the end of the axle and it was quite a common issue with E13 e-bike cranks. They had a big, big recall, I think, um, because they were cracking Shimano axles and that was to do with their clamp, I think, being a bit too harsh on the axle for, for the same kind of bolt load as the Shimano ones. Anyway, it looks like Shimano have realized that it actually didn't need to be a through hole and that hole is to capture the little safety clip on the non drive side crank arm. They've just gone for a blind hole and that should reduce the stress razor and prevent any more cracking. It was particularly prevalent on their e-bike cranks. Gone to town on making it waterproof. The uh, clamshell bonded construction is the same. You can see the epoxy is, is all around there. So they've, they've stuck to their guns on the, the design. Um, they've just gone to town on making it more waterproof, I think. And then I'm not sure, maybe they've evacuated the inside before bonding it so there's no humidity, there's no trap moisture inside. And I'm not sure if this is a new feature or not, but it looks like there's basically like a, when they press fit the axle into the aluminium spider, it looks like there's some sort of like permanent oil seal there now. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a feature on the old ones or not, I can't remember, but again, that's going to waterproof the join between the aluminium and the steel um, and should prevent any moisture getting in. But yeah, just thought I'd take a little look at that. Unfortunately, these are 175s. I did ask if I could actually change the crank length, um, but these came originally on my 2016 TCR XL, which obviously came with longer cranks, um, but unfortunately they could only do a like for like. But uh, shout out to Map Deck for sorting this out pretty quick. I thought it was gonna be longer, like six weeks, but I think it was three to four weeks in the end. So yeah, pretty good, it's a 5236. The finish of the chain rings is very different from the finish of the crank. This is a much more dull satin and this is very, very glossy. Um, but yeah, these will be going back on the, the TCR rim brake bike or the gravel bike, I'm not sure yet. They're certainly a lot heavier than the old ones as well, worth mentioning. And that's probably to lower the surface strain on the, the bond lines to lower the shear strain a little bit. But there we go.